and welcome to, what day is it? Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. As usual, I'm forgetting the day. It's absolutely shocking. Um, and well, today we might have a treat for you. Uh, it's so often it seems to be the case that we have a treat on Cracking the Cryptic. But this puzzle on screen, you might notice, if you were to count them, it has 12 arrows in it. And it's actually set by a YouTuber um, who's been a friend of the channel for a long time um, called 12 Tone. So look, here you go, here's 12 Tone. 12 Tone's got more subscribers than we have, 481,000 subscribers. And I've watched a few of 12 Tone's videos uh, over the years, and they are just so creative. This one here, Understanding Comfortably Numb. I mean, Comfortably Numb is one of my favorite songs of all time. And the way that uh, 12 Tone sort of elaborates on what's going on is just a joy. So spend six minutes, 53 seconds of your life watching that, and you won't regret it. This is a good trade-off in terms of time. Um, yeah, so anyway, 12 Tone sent this, this puzzle to us uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, and I sent it to the testers praying it was going to be good because I thought it'll make it just a wonderful crossover. Um, I love the idea that that people who are big on social media watch the channel and actually enjoy it and then they might get into setting Sudokus and that those Sudokus might have high quality and the test to say this is a brilliant puzzle. So yeah, as I say, we should be in for a treat. Now, if you are a subscriber to the channel and about 399,000 of you are, you might have got a notification today to tell you that we are going to be live streaming again on Thursday night. 10 o'clock UK time, we are going to be attempting the game Bubba is You. And I say we because it's going to be Mark and me doing battle with the game, I hope, if the technology works. Um, so we'd be delighted to have your company when we attempt that game. It's been recommended to us countless, well, thousands of times. So um, yeah, it should be fun. Um, Mark and I solving together. I don't know how that's going to work, but, but we shall see. Thursday night is the time that that will happen. Uh, other news, uh, well, it's very nearly the start of October. Over on Patreon, there is a lot going on. Um, we've got uh, the solve of Sam Kappelman lines, this sort of 3D 6x6 Sudoku experience. That is wonderful. Uh, it's a wonderful puzzle. Do have a go. There'll be a link under this video to play that puzzle uh, if you haven't had a go at it yet. And on Patreon, there is a solve video. So if you're a $3 subscriber on Patreon, you'll be able to watch a video on how that happens. If you're just a $2 subscriber though, do not, um, do not lament because in just a couple of days time, start of October, you're gonna get your monthly reward for October, which is this incredible, and I mean that that word, I'm using that advisedly. It is an incredible uh, Sudoku hunt on based on the lockout lines puzzles. So I did a lockout lines puzzle on the channel just a couple of days ago, and there is a complete puzzle pack of these um, being created by some of the world's great constructors. It is unbelievable in terms of quality. And what we're going to do to celebrate Bubba is You, um, Jan Gunther was kind enough to give us some, some keys to the game. So the first correct solution we get uh, to the Lockout Lines uh, pack, we will get, we'll, we'll get um, a game key that will allow you to play the game for free. And then also uh, we'll collate all the correct entries we'll receive and we'll draw uh, a name out of the hat and they will also get a game key. So um, definitely a little bit of extra incentive if you enjoy your Sudoku and if you're watching this, you probably do. Uh, anything else to mention? Well, actually we released um, uh, a video yesterday on the channel of me solving something called the Fistimafel crossword. That's proved incredibly popular. Um, so do have a look at that as well. It is, it's a really wonderful idea and a lot of fun. It won't take you too long, I don't think, but I think anybody who's watched the channel for any length of time will get a bit of a kick out of it. So have a look at it. Right, that's all I've got to tell you. Let's get on to 12 arrows by 12 tone, and I'll tell you what's going on. So normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow circle. So what does that mean? That means that these three cells here, you can see they're all on the same arrow. Uh, so let's say this was a one, a two, and a five. One plus two plus five is eight. So in the circle, we would have to write an eight and that's how arrows work. Now, the thing that caught my eye when I loaded this puzzle up was this purple arrow. I can see why this, this arrow has been done in purple. It's because of the, the graphics. So it was to make sure it was clear that this circle here is summing this digit and this digit up. 
because otherwise if we'd done this arrow in grey what would have happened was <laughs> that arrow would have disappeared in there and you might have thought it had re-emerged in this direction and that this circle was just pointing in this this direction here. So this purple arrow I think is a disambiguating arrow to make it clear how these two circles work and it does seem to be clear to me and that is good. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see what 12 tone has got in store for us. It's a shame 12 tone can't draw his little doodly pictures all over this as I'm solving it. But maybe one day, maybe one day that's something we could think about doing. Now, I suppose those three cells, which I did for the example, we know that three, three digits, if they can't be the same, the minimum we could make those three squares would be one plus two plus three, which is six. So this little uh, circle here has to either be six, seven, eight, or nine, as does that one. That's also a three cell arrow. For some reason, that one didn't register with me as redolently as this one did. Have we got any more? It looks like there's something going on in the central box. Oh, oh. <laughs> double O. Uh, that is a three cell arrow. So that's a six, seven, eight and nine, or nine. Good grief. My typing has gone to pot. Um, this one, that is, that is a five cell. Arrow. Right. Okay. We know this square. That's what this is telling us because how on earth are we going to fill in these five dig digits on the same arrow such that this is still a single digit number? Well, there's only one way. Those three digits there will have to be one, two and three. They, so this arrow already adds up to six, but it's still got to cater for these two cells. They must be one and two. And if we do all of that, we can keep this arrow just down to nine. So that's quite a... Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, I was getting quite excited then because what I was noticing is that there's definitely a one and a two in that triple. And there's definitely a one, two pair here. So we have to put the digits one and two into box nine in these three squares. And I was immediately about to say this couldn't be a one or a two, but that's not right, is it? Because this is just repeating. Although this is an arrow, it's a short stubby arrow um, of little consequence. And that's annoying because that means this could be a one and it would just repeat in there. Um, so I can't conclude anything about positions of the ones and twos in this box at least I don't think I can um, so perhaps what we've got to do now is look at these sort of three arrows pointing upwards into the sky uh, in box five. Oh, oh that's actually that's beautiful right Right. So uh, my first question was not this question, but I'm going to I'm going to go to this anyway. When you get a lot of arrow cells in a in a sort of area of a Sudoku, it's often worth wondering about the digit nine, because normally it's quite difficult to put nine on an arrow cell, because, of course, if you put nine in any of those cells, your circles are going to have to be at least equal to ten. If you put nine in there. Whatever we put in there, this circle has become too large for the puzzle. Now, I was about to say here that that's very useful because it'll allow me to put a nine here. But then I realized that these short stubby arrows could have a nine in them, except they can't now because of this nine here. If we put a nine here, it gets reflected because the arrow has to basically be equal to the circle and that's gonna give a problem. Similarly, if I put a nine there, that becomes a nine and that also gives a problem. So in this box, the nine is, I think, restricted to the circle cell. Um, now, my first thought when I looked at all of these arrows here is to sum all of those squares up because there are six cells there that all have to contain different digits. And the triangular number for six is 21. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six is 21. So I know that these cells here have to add up to at least 21. And there, well, now we know one of them is a nine. So in fact, we have to make 21 from those three circles and we can't repeat a nine in them. 
but that means these two have to add up to at least 12. Ooh, that's horrible. Okay, that's no good at all, is it? Because actually, there's nothing preventing those digits being the same. You could even double six that, and that would work. Oh. Would double six work? Is that going to give the, the nine still a chance? Yeah, it might. Oh, no, maybe it doesn't. I think double six technically doesn't work because these digits here would have to be one, two, four, and five. Oh, no, that would work. Three, six would still be available. Oh, bobbins. <laughs> okay, that is a fool's errand. Um, right, so what else do we look at then? We've got to look at... <laughs> um, I don't know, actually. Hang on, what's going on in this puzzle? Why can't I do it? Uh, no, I'm not. Inspiration is not. Ah. Okay, well, this this cell might is a tiny bit interesting. Maybe not interesting enough, but let's let's add up all the arrow cells in box three. There are five of them. So the triangular number for five is 15. Now, if these outline cells have to add up to at least 15, the two circles, the two circles giving rise to these or giving birth to these arrows have to add up to at least 15. So if those two digits have to add up to at least 15, this square has to be at least, whoa, 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 has to be at least be six, seven, eight or nine as well. So we're sort of getting a couple of syzygies of six, seven, eights and nines up in the top right hand corner. Hmm, that ah, that can't be a nine. It sees a nine here. So this this arrow, ah, this arrow has a one on it now. How do I know this arrow has a one on it? Well, to make the totals of six, seven, or eight in three digits, if those digits are different, you're going to need to include a one. Because if you go two plus three plus four, that's equal to nine. And uh, now ones, look, there has to be a one in one of these three squares by Sudoku because there's no one there and no one here, except me. <laughs> um, so there must be a one in one of those three cells. Uh, I feel like I've underused box five. I really do. I've got very little out of the fact that these digits have to add up to at least 21. That's really very surprising. Now, I guess what we can say, if these have to add up, yeah, if those two digits have to add up to at least 12, and they do, oh no, I can't even say that. I can't repeat nine. So four, eight, five, seven, six, six, would be possible or some combination of higher digits as well that's really really surprising um, maybe I've got to think about it differently I've got 18 in those squares oh okay well here's another way of thinking about the central box and this time I'm going to use the secret a secret the secret is something we've only told a few people on the channel over the years but it is a rather wonderful thing and the secret is that this the whole of box five here adds up to 45 and the reason for that of course is that the whole of the box will con will consist of the digits one to nine once each so if you add up the digits one to nine you get the triangular number for nine and that's 45 um, now that means I can actually isolate the value of these little cells here because these little cells, the yellow cells, are going to be 45 minus 9 in those squares and 9 there, so two lots of 9, so 18. So these yellow squares are equal to 27. And what I've just noticed is that these cells are equal to those cells. So these outline cells here, let's give these another color, have to add up to exactly 27. I was about to say at least 27, but it's not. It's exactly 27. And I can't use a 9. 
Oh, but I can repeat digits. Oh, bobbins. Oh, bobbins. So I can repeat digits. So if I went 8787, seven, that would be 30. So there aren't that many degrees of freedom here. Is there some reason that 8787 seven isn't possible? Is that going to make... Oh! Right, yeah, hang on, this. I think I have to use my purple arrow here. Because I was just thinking, if this is 8 or 7, the problem is this square is at least a 3, because there's a 1, 2 pair already in box 8. Oh, and in fact, that can't be a 9 either. So this can never be an 8. Right, ah, this might be the key. This might be the key. So this has a maximum value of 8. This has a minimum value of 3. So this square here can never be greater than 5. So this square here is 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Now, that means these three cells, the other three red cells, have to add up to at least 22, because we know all four red cells add to 27. 22 in three cells without using 9 is more interesting. It, oh. No. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is really, this is a brilliant puzzle. This is really clever. Right. Right. So, 22 in three digits. We can't use a nine. So, are, is there a repeated digit in these three cells? Yes. Because if we use six, seven, and eight, which are the next three highest numbers available, six, seven, and eight only add to 21. So there is a repeated digit in these cells. And I think, yeah, th this cannot be the repeated digit. Because if th whatever this is reflects here and therefore cannot appear in those two squares at all. So this cannot be the repeated digit. So the repeated digit is those two digits. These two digits, I've done them in red. I'm going to give them an extra flash. These are the same. Um... Now, they're the same, and these are adding up to at least 22. So we now can't do double six, because double six would require this to be at least equal to, well, to be, yes, at least equal to 10. That's too many. So these two squares are either sevens or eights. Now let's check that out. If that's double seven, this square would need to still be at least equal to 8 in order to get to 22 for these three squares. And if this is double 8, uh, then you've got 16, you need to get to 22 at least, so that, ah, that could be 6, 6, 7 or 8. So this square here is a 6, 7 or an 8. This square here is a 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. No sign of Maverick today buzzing past me. This is very, very unusual, although the wind is uh, quite strong today, so maybe Maverick hasn't dared to take off. Um, okay, so have we now have we now worked out the puzzle? Is this? <laughs> I feel like we've just made amazing pro amazing progress. Sorry, I thought I did just hear Maverick, um, but. I still don't seem to have actually bottomed this out, do I? So, what do we do next? <laughs> do I know that this is a real... No, I don't, do I? This can still be a very small number. So I was wondering if I could get a 6, 7, 8 triple in this row, which I could do if this was a 6, 7 or an 8. But the problem here is, although this is at least equal to 3, this square here can be small enough. It could be a 1. So that would give us just 4 in this square. So this square is 4 or higher. Is there another, is there some other way of restricting this digit? 
So if these, we know these are the same, don't we? So if these are double seven, these squares add up to 14. 14 and 18 is 32. These have to add up to at least 13, or exactly 13, actually. Which would certainly mean this couldn't be very low. Hang on, if that's double 8, then we've got... Oh, then we're bringing the total down, which is going to make it easier. So we've got 16 in those squares, plus 18 is 34. These have to add up to at least... Ah, OK. These two squares here have to add up to at least 11. So there is no way that this square is a, ah, it's not a, it's not a one, obviously, because this square can't be a 10. It's actually not a two either, because this square can't be a nine. So this square is three, four, or f oh, this is beautiful. This square is three, four, or five. It reflects in via the short stubby arrow to this square, which is now three, four, or five. Now three, four, and five, here is a knowledge bomb from Cracking the Crypt. It is not one or two. So that means there is a one, two pair in box nine from these one, twos. This is three, four, or five. This is at least three. So together, well, we can't go three, three. So the minimum here, if this is, if this was a three, three plus four or five is at least equal to seven. And if this is higher than three, then you're already, because this is a minimum of three, you're already into seven again. So this square here is seven or eight, and there you go. Aha! Now I've got you. That's a six. That's really a sequence of very clever logical steps, uh, 12 tone. Really like that. Now, oh, look at all this. Now I've got one, two, three here and one, two, three here. So where do the one, two and three go in column one? Answer, only in those three squares. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Now those two squares, that's a two cell arrow that can't have a one, two or a three on it. So it must be four, five adding to nine or this square here is going to be a double digit number. Uh, now, now nine is in one of those two squares in box four. Nine is not. Ah, OK, this is useful as well. This nine sees those two squares. We know those two squares have to add up to at least 15 because of their arrows. So now the only way that can happen is if this is a 7-8 pair, because 6-9 is not available. So these are, in fact, a 1-2-3-4-5 quintuple. And I've got a 7-8 pair in column 8. This is, this is incredibly clever. There's a lot of intricate things going on in this puzzle. Um, okay. So, what does this mean? So these squares here are from 6, 7, 8, and 9, just to complete the quadruple in box 3. These squares here are 6, 7, 8, triple in box 1. Ah, OK. So this square is a 4 or a 5, just to complete pencil marking of column 3. I sort of feel like them. Oh, I'm, oh, okay. Now I've got a, a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple in row four. I'm almost wondering whether I'm going to need to colour the puzzle into sort of high digits and low digits. But let's see. This is a seven or an eight arrow in three cells, so it must have a one on it. So there's no one on the other arrow. Which can oh it can still be eight if it's three five, and then this would be a one two four arrow. Yeah, that's that's working unfortunately. Um, hmm. Okay. So where do we go from here? Now six I've just noticed has to be in this domino in box seven, so it's not there. Uh, I don't think that does anything. Six. Um, what are the options for this square? Let's have a look at this. Because uh, I think I've pencil marked. Well, I haven't pencil marked this arrow, which can be a six or a nine. 
and I've not pencil marked. Well, these these arrows in the middle box, I don't think I know how to do those yet. And this arrow as well. Now we know this can't be a one or a two, so it's at least a three. It could be a four. Uh, now if it's four, couldn't go with five. If it's five, so I think this has got the options of three, four, or five. It's a bit of a weird arrow though this. I keep looking at it thinking I've somehow broken it because the purple arrow is going through it. We know that there must be a three in one of those two cells, don't we? Because if there isn't, this would be a four, five pair and would add up to nine, which is impossible. So there's definitely a three in one of these two positions. Um, Okay, don't know what to do with that. Let us have a look for some other magic. What else can we see that's going to be going on here? We've got a nine in one of those two swells. We've got... Oh, I've got something. Right, look at this row. Six, seven, eight, nine is a quadruple in row six. So that square, yeah, I think I, I think if I coloured the puzzle according to low and high digits, some of this might have become quick, uh, obvious more quickly. But this square here would have been a low digit because it has to be one, two, three, four, and five. And now look at column nine. That is a quintuple on ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives. So the rest of this column has got to be six, sevens, eights, and nines. Oh, this is gorgeous, right? Now this square, what is it? It's got, it's too high. It's a three cell arrow. So this can't be a six anymore. So that's a nine. This must be a six. This must be a one, two pair to make the arrow add up. And all of a sudden we might be cooking with gas. That square, ah, that square's not a six. That means that square's not a six. I've now got a seven, eight pair here. That's a six. That's not six or nine. That's not nine. I've now got a seven, eight pair here. So that's a six. There's got to be a six in one of those two cells by Sudoku. These two cells by Sudoku. And has this, has this done the magic that we needed it to do? Right, that's interesting. Look at these two cells. Those two cells cannot be a one, two pair. Because if they are, combined with that one, two pair, you would have to put a one and a two in those three digits by Sudoku, which you can see is impossible. So in fact, one of these digits must be a three. Therefore, this is not a three. And what, whichever of these digits is a one or a two, it will meet its friend over here. And by Sudoku, throw a one or a two into that little cell, which gives, which gives us a one, two pair in row six. So this square is not a one or a two. So this square is a three, four or a five, isn't it? I'm just looking along row six. I've got a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple and a one, two pair. So the rest of the digits have got to be threes, fours and fives. Is that helpful? Um, don't know. <laughs> uh, I wonder whether we're going to have to colour the ones and twos at some point. That is very possible, I think. But let me just have a stare at this for a second and see if I can see. Now if I know this one is not six. So if this is seven, this is double eight. Hang on, let me just work this out. Can I restrict this square now? If this is seven and this is double eight, that's 23 then this would have to be a four, wouldn't it? Because didn't I work out that those had to be 27 exactly? So if this is seven, double eight, that's four. If this is eight, double seven, that's five. Ah, so this square is now never a three, which means that square is never a three. But we, ah, we knew one of those was a three because otherwise it's a four, five arrow. So that's a three, gorgeous. That's no longer a three. 
There's now a 3 in one of those two cells by Sudoku, because the 3, 4, 5 triple here, you can see this square can't be the 3 in it. This is still not resolving this 7 and 8 into this cell. Nine? Is nine restricted somehow? Nine is in one of two places, I think, in box six. Which is interesting, but it's not enough, is it? Oh, I've got a one two pair in column eight now, so that's not a one or a two. I've got a feeling there are a lot of that lot of things like that in this puzzle that would be very easy to overlook. I've got I've got a very unusually large number of pencil marks for me. Uh, Mark would be in his element here. Um, do we know anything else? I've, what about this? Okay, this nine arrow can't be four, five, look, because that was going to break this square. Ah, and it can't be three, six, because that will break this square. This square could be neither a three nor a six. So this arrow is either one, eight, or it's two, seven. Oh, beautiful. One, two, seven, eight, quadruple in box, in box five now. So the rest of this box has got to have threes, fours, fives, and sixes in it. So these squares here are threes, fours, fives, and sixes. And this one is not three, and this one is not six. Bobbins. <laughs> it's, not, it's not good enough, is it? It's not quite resolving things. At least I don't think it is. Can that... Ah, oh, this square here. Oh, I see what it is doing. It's placing six in the box. This square can't be six, because if it was, it would need a very low digit into this cell, and it can't be a very low digit. Yes, in fact, I've just also noticed I've got a one, two pair in column five, so that square can't be a one or a two. So now there's a seven, eight pair. So it does look like it's going to be colouring ones and twos. So this can't be six, was the other thing we were saying. So now six in the box has got to go into this cell here. And ones and twos, if I colour them, what am I going to learn about the world? These three would be the same. That would be the same. That would be the same. Just, oh, no, that might die out, actually. Pull that. <laughs> um, okay, I can't quite see how to do that. So it must be something else. What other digits do we know a lot about in this puzzle that are not ones and twos? The answer is very few. Um, okay. So, I've <laughs> got no idea where to look here. Um, one, two. This square sees 7, 8, and 9, and 1, and 2, and 6. Oh, okay, that square is also there for 3, 4, or 5. Oh, and it's not 3, because one of those is 3. Is that right? Hang on, I'm just going to double check this. This square here definitely sees 1 and 2, so it's not those. It sees 3 in one of those squares, so it's not that. It could be 4, 5. It can't be 6, 7, 8, or 9. Yeah, that's... Ah, oh, okay. So this square can only be 4 or 5. That gives... Ah... Oh, that gives me a 4-5 pair in row 5, so that square now is a 3. Maybe it's the 4-5s that need colouring. Um, 3 is not in this cell. So 3... No, I don't really even want... To, ah, where does 3 go in box 4? Only there now, it looks like. So that gets rid of a 3 from this cell. Now I've got a 1-2 pair and a 4-5 pair in this row. So this square has to be a 7, 8, or a 9. Okay. 
sixes, nines, um, fours and fives. So whatever this is, this isn't, this is, Oh, okay, right. That is quite interesting. I can get a three here, I think. Not sure it's actually going to do me much. Ah, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is, no, right, I take it back. This is very important. This square here and its relationship with the fours and fives in the grid is really rather gorgeous. Let me show you. Whatever this is, you can see it sees this cell. So if this is a four, this is a five, and this is a four. So these two are the same color. Now, if these two are the same color, that means these two are different. Uh, so they're, they're the other version of four, five. Now, this square and this square are therefore different digits. They are a four, five pair. They are seeing this square. So this square can be neither a four nor a five and can only be a three. And the thing that I think is really interesting about that is now this arrow is forced. This can't be a seven, because if it's a seven, this needs to be a one, two, four arrow, and it's got a three on it for certain. So not only can we remove three from all of those squares, this arrow has to be an eight. That has to be a one, four pair. Oh, whoopsie. And this arrow now is a seven with a two, five pair on it. Oh, whoopsie, two, five which means this square is not a five. Ah, and this square is a one, and that's a two. And that's going to give me a two here and a one here. And is this going to go through the grid like a dose of salts? The answer might be... Might be yes. Keep going. Two, three. Wow. Oh, look. This, this nine arrow is now four, so that's got to be a seven to add up. So that's an eight. 8 gets transposed here. You now can't put an 8 in those two squares, which becomes 7. So these add up to 22, which means this has to be a 5, because we know that all three of them add up to 27. So that's a 5, that's a 4. You can see the 7 arrow was also telling us the same thing. This square is not a 5. It's a 3, 4 pair here. So this is a 5, which means that's a 5, that's a 4, that's a 4 by colouring. This 5 is fixing the 5 and the 2. What a beautiful puzzle, though. Honestly, this is just... It's excellent, is what it is. That's an 8. Um, now, that square there has got to be, I think, a 7 or a 9, just to complete box 6. And this square is say it's telling me that is a 9, so that is a 7, and that's an 8. Yeah, that all looks sensible. That just looks like normal Sudoku. That's an eight by normal Sudoku. That's a nine. That's a five. This is a seven. Good Lord. So now this is a six, eight pair at the bottom of column two. And these squares are four, five, and seven. And that square there has to be a four because it sees five and seven in the row. This one is telling us the order of the ones and the fours in box three. That's telling us that this is a three. These are a one, two pair. We can get rid of at least some stuff, I think, from this. We can get rid of four, actually. We can't get rid of as much as I was hoping. Ah, oh, this square here is a naked single. It's a one. It sees a two and a five in the column. That gives us the one and the two there. So this, this is a five. This is a three. I don't want to speak too soon, but have we actually done this? We might have done, you know. These squares are twos, sevens, and nines, and at the top there you've got a four, six pair, so that's a four, that's a six. That's a six by Sudoku, that gives us the six and the eight. The eight in column nine must go there, this square's got to be a seven, that fixes the seven and the five. The four and the three are done, because of this four here. That square can't be a two, that square can't be, in fact that square is a two. That means the seven and the nine are resolved. It's, it's, I think it's just coming to a rather elegant finish, isn't it? That should be an eight, that should be a five. These squares here have got to be a four, nine pair. Ah, that's not resolved. 
don't think. It might it might be resolving, I'm not seeing, but I can't see how. Uh, this square's got to be 3 and 9. Ah, oh, that's going to do it. So that's 3, that's 9, that's 9, that's 4, that's 4, and that is 6. And that is how to solve a rather beautiful puzzle by a fellow YouTuber. 12 tone, take a bow. That was really good. Um, and, it, and it was tricky. It, well, at least for me, it was tricky. I'm not sure how obvious it is. This nine was very obvious and quite beautiful as well because that was kind of caused by this nine. But then you really had to think quite hard about these four digits. And it was only once I realized that this digit couldn't be that large that I was able to make any progress at all. But it was beautiful. There was some beautiful stuff in there. The way that this four five pair resolve, revolve, resolved, resolved, revolved, resolved this cell here was gorgeous because that gave us basically that finished the puzzle all of a sudden this once this became an eight everything after that was just plain old sudoku loved it absolutely loved it let me know in the comments how you got on and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic